video to accompany the Sway new le- newsletter on the 2nd of March. Uh, mainly the information is going to be about the wider opening or full opening of the school on the 8th. The first thing I have to say is that if your um, child normally has school dinners, please, please book your uh, school dinners um, by midnight, Tuesday the 2nd. Uh, it's that week's notice that we, you know, we've always had just to give the kitchen team as much notice as possible. So just to go through everything that's on the newsletter and just give a little bit more information, the government has announced that all children will be expected to be in school from Monday. We are opening uh, for all children. Uh, we've put in a significant amount of work in uh, to make sure that all the risks are mitigated as possible as much as possible. But largely, I think for most children, with the exception of a couple of uh, small changes, will feel that uh, it's like it was in the run-up to um, Christmas. So um, the key things in the run-up for this week is World Book Day on Thursday. Now, we always celebrate books uh, throughout the year, but we do celebrate World Book Day. So we'll have an assembly on uh, Thursday morning uh, and then... Um, various events and things like that. And we know we've got the potatoes. You had that about the letter, that in the letter, and they are available from school. Um, but also, we will be having our celebration assembly on Thursday at 1.30 because there will not be any live lessons on Friday because we need to be able to support the staff in preparing for everyone's return on Monday. So, Monday morning, we reopen. There will be breakfast club. You must book for that, please. And again, details are in the newsletter. There, the risk assessment is on the COVID-19 planning page on the website. Uh, there are a few um, uh, changes we've made. Some of it is just to remind children that, you know, we are at a time of a national pandemic or international pandemic. But I would just underpin some things for parents that we are strongly requesting that parents wear uh, face coverings when they're on school site. We are obviously aware that um, some of our parents and carers have exemptions and others uh, uh, of our parents and carers have strong ideological views on wearing face coverings. We will not refuse admission to anybody onto the school site. Be really clear on that. But we would ask that people do uh, wear them um, to to reduce anxiety of other parents coming on as much as anything. Um, we would ask that only one adult uh, drops off and collects children. We were getting to the point towards uh, Christmas where we were forgetting family groups again, and that was increasing the number of people on the school site. Um, and also, we would ask that you do stick to the staggered timings. Now, um, we are aware that for work that uh, some of our parents and carers were asking or had asked that they could uh, move their slot Uh, And some of those who need to be at work early were coming in the A to H uh, slot. But to be quite honest, by December, we were seeing uh, at the start of the day in that first slot, maybe 60 percent of those coming on school site. Um, So we would ask that unless you have it prearranged, that you do stick to your slots, because this is about spacing people out and safety on the school site. Um, And finally, if you wish to speak to somebody face to face in school, that will have to be booked. So we have a limited number of um, staff meeting, or sorry, safe uh, meeting spaces. School dinners, I've talked about, need to be booked tonight. Children, we will go through in terms of their expectations once they're in. Children, the guidance is clear, do not need to wear a face covering, uh, other than those who are on the taxi. Um, we will continue with the bubble system, um, and the children are well versed in that. PE, um, when the uh, children have their PE days, we do ask they come in their PE kit. So that's T-shirts, shirts, joggers, uh, T-shirts, shorts or joggers, school jumper and trainers. Uh, PE will start from Monday. Um, so the reception PE day is on Fridays. Year one classes are on Tuesday and Wednesday. Year two classes are on Wednesday and Thursday. Year three classes are on Tuesday and Thursday. Year 4, Monday and Wednesday. Year 5, Monday and Thursday. And Year 6, Tuesday and Friday. So that does mean that Year 4 and Year 5 will need to come on Monday, first day of term, in their PE kits, please. Um, Children need to bring as little to school as possible. It's all detailed um, in 
please go back to those small bags, not the large rucksacks. We don't have room for those. Um, and then a couple of other bits. Government are really clear that unless a child has a shielding letter themselves, the government, the Department of Education, are saying that usual rules on school attendance will uh, apply. So the school has a responsibility to record attendance and to follow up any absences. The uh, Keystone Academy Trust, obviously, they are going to be looking at what we're doing um, because they will be under pressure from Regional Schools Commissioner and from the Department of Education to make sure that all children are in unless they have that uh, shielding letter. Please do talk to us about this. I've spoken to a couple of parents. It really does apply to a tiny amount of children in school. Um, but please do ring and speak to myself or a school leader if you wish to discuss this further. Uh, final couple of bits. Breakfast club I've mentioned, but if your child is not booked in, uh, or sorry, is has not been before, you'll need to complete a registration form. There's a really useful uh, leaflet put on, uh, given to me by Mrs. Ford um, around helping you to prepare your child for the first day back in school. We know there'll be anxieties and we'll be there to support, but they have actually made uh, a return to school in September or June for some of our children last year. So many of them will be well versed in it. Finally, catch up and lost learning are all phrases that uh, you will have seen in the press. Um, I think that for me, it's not lost learning, it's delayed learning, but it really then does mean that we need, as a school, to um, support your children with their learning. Now, that's something we're good at. Um, research shows and experience shows that the biggest factor in a child's learning is actually that they get quality first teaching. That's why we really do make sure that your children are sat in front of the best teachers and teaching assistants that we can put into school. That's why our standards have risen over um, the last nine years um, and, and hopefully that's why you've chosen us as a school for your child. So first point is quality first teaching, what they're getting in class. Then the intervention that we've always had programmes for will, t will uh, continue and I think it's really important to stress that also that, str that um, whole child approach and the broad and balanced curriculum. So they will continue to get their music and their um, PE and they will continue to use the school grounds and we will continue to go into the uh, wooded area and we will continue to do computing and art and all the other wonderful things that give, the ch give children a broad approach to their work. Um, we will spend this term um, using um, assessment for learning. You've used the jargonist, uh, the jargonistic phrase of or AFL, but it's basically looking at the children's work, talking to the children, asking them questions, using different approaches to identify those gaps or those key uh, concepts that we need to make sure that by the time they move on to uh, their next year group class teacher that we have really put a lot of work into those. Um, but let's be blunt, um, we've had a really high level of engagement, up into the 80%, high 80% of children um, engaging at what the uh, we've agreed with the trust is a, an acceptable level. So for the vast majority of our children, they have had good coverage of the curriculum. And we can identify where the gaps in confidence, fluency, or knowledge are. For some of our children who have not accessed the curriculum, have not done uh, very much of the work, we will then be looking at what intervention we can put in place. But what we will be doing is making sure those children who have, and some of our children have really flourished during this period, we will continue to push them uh, onward. So, um, you know, there's a lot of work for staff to do, and there's a lot of uh, work for Mr. Singleton and myself and Mrs. Uh, Ford as inclusion leader to put in place but we're confident we can do it we've got a lot of support from the trust and we you know that we've got a fantastic staff in place so uh, if uh, you have any concerns or worries please do uh, ring into school or speak to me or email me those have my email address uh, bill.lord at longsutton.links.sc.uk that sc is sch for school um, and we will see you on Monday and we cannot wait. Um, 
the school is not the same unless, uh, um, unless it's full. And it's a joyous, raucous place at times. Um, and at other times, that you could hear a pin drop when the children are learning uh, as well. And it just doesn't feel the same. We've had nearly 30% of the children in. Um, but we'll be back, hopefully, very close to 100% on Monday. And I can't wait to see you all on the gate as well. So have a good final week. Hopefully see lots of you for the celebration assembly on Thursday. And then all back together as a school on Monday.